Hello, everybody. My name is Elaine Friend. I'm the host and creator of Are You Highly Sensitive Live? And I've gotten a great question this week about Santa and highly sensitive children. So I wanted to share the question with you and just a couple of my responses. What do I tell my highly sensitive child about Santa? I don't want to lie, but the questions are relentless. I wish I could avoid it altogether. I remember being a sensitive child and believing. And I remember the devastation at eight years old when my friend's cousin told me something different. I'm not sure how best to handle it. The questions are already starting and I know there will be more. Elaine, please help. What is your guidance? This is a really important question about Santa and highly sensitive children. And I wanted to share my response and wish everybody who celebrates Christmas a Merry Christmas. I'm a sometime celebrator of Christmas, but I grew up celebrating Christmas and believing in Santa. And I raised a child who had Santa in his life. I did it differently for my child than I experienced it growing up. And I think most of us are trying to make different choices. You know, how we learn to parent, we either learn by reacting to what, how we were parented or, and doing it differently or doing the same thing. And finding something in between a balance is always challenging. The question to me is more about sensitive children and all their questions than it is actually about Santa. So the first strategy is that we always ask back the question that the child is asking and find out what it is that they're actually asking. And a really great way is to ask them what their answer is. So if the question is, um, is Santa real? Then we might say, well, what do you think? Is Santa real? And they can list all the evidence in, on both sides of the question. Also, they might say, well, how does Santa get to all those houses? Or how does Santa get down the chimney? Big fat guy, how does he squeeze down a little chimney? Or what if a house doesn't have a chimney? How does Santa get in? Well, my answer is again, to ask him those questions. How do you think it would work? And once you engage in a conversation about any question that your sensitive child asks, you come to realize that there has to be some kind of belief, you realize that they are thinking in their own mind about what the answers might be. And I would like to know what their answers are before I put my adult lens on their question and start giving my adult answers. Those are generally not what's important to children. So let me just say, for example, that as you start to discuss how Santa does all the things that Santa supposedly does, well, for goodness sakes, obviously it takes magic. And did you know that the way magic works is if you believe in magic, then it's real for you. If you believe in magic, then it's real. There's so much magic in the world. You've got to admit, I mean, gravity is magic and waking up in the morning is magic. And if you celebrate Christmas, you probably believe in some other magic that many religions call miracles. And miracles are absolutely magic. If you believe, then it's real. And so that is my policy on sensitive children and Santa. So have a conversation with your sensitive child, be they three or eight or 13 or 23. <laughs> and I wanted to share that my younger sister told me her children are older. And she told me as they became tweens and teens that her policy was you must believe to receive. And so she just kept that suspended reality going and, and probably still is that um, for sure Santa's real in your house or in your heart, as long as you believe it. One other little Santa anecdote that I saw in the news this morning was a young 30 year old, I believe, African American woman newscaster. And they were showing a photograph of her when her mom was 30 and she was one. Her first photo was Santa. And the one-year-old little African-American girl's face was terrified. And as looking back on this picture, what she had to say about it was, this big fat white guy was going to break into my house in, in the middle of the night. And to her, that was a terrifying prospect through much of her childhood. Well, here's the way Santa works and the way magic works. 
he's exactly unique for each family. So you get to create Santa in any way that you want to create it. And the way Santa gets into your house or whether Santa comes or what Santa looks like is unique to your child and your family. So allow the magic to enter your lives and your family and you will be able to avoid um, that, that quandary that you have. So, you know, in, in uh, Steiner schools, they say that children can see fairies until age seven and that it is much easier to, for a child. And this is also about child development for them to live with suspended uh, reality and to just live in the make-believe world much. It's just so much more fluid and easy um, up until about the age of seven. Then it becomes a little bit more challenging, but remember that our sensitive children are both um, slower developers and um, remaining in earlier childhood years longer and also so much faster developing and so astute and thoughtful and, you know, articulate and uh, just have an amazing perspective on things and so insightful. So um, both things are true of sensitive children once they start speaking. <laughs> It's an unbelievably challenge, unbelievable challenge to try to figure out which one, which child do you have at any given time. So stay with magic and go with magic. And may you have magic in your life and in your heart as you move through the holiday season and onward. Please, please do subscribe um, to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for my How Do You Talk to Children About New Year's Resolutions video early in the week of New Year's. So I hope to see you more and thank you. Feel free to share this anywhere you find it. Thank you so much. Elaine Friend and Merry Christmas.